Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth. By following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. Well, I welcome you here on an absolutely gorgeous summer Sunday morning, and I welcome you back to our 9 a.m. time, and I do want to say thank you again to Father Adam, who came last week at 11 o'clock to celebrate Mass here while I was down in Scranton, and uh, you know, God's got a great sense of humor. A couple weeks ago, we were up in Maine looking for hot and sunny, and it's cold, there's hypothermia alerts, we're going into water go down to Scranton, and it is hot. The 80, the, uh, they have a thermostat in the sanctuary, 88 degrees and humid at 3 o'clock in the afternoon last Saturday for that wedding. And I had to actually have the, uh, the assistant priest there turn the fan down because they kept turning the pages of my missile. So I had little fan, 88 and humid, and all I know is that God has got one great sense of humor. Uh, last night, Sharon and I, or yesterday afternoon, Sharon and I went up to Williamstown to see a play. And I'll drop money to see a play if it makes me laugh. I'll, I'll drop money to, to, to laugh. I don't drop money to be sad. So I thought I had bought tickets to a comedy. I go and it's about cancer. And there were funny moments in there, but the poor woman at the end, she dies for like 10 minutes on the stage. And uh, it just, it, it wasn't what I was expecting. So again, God has got a wonderful sense of humor. And I also want to mention to uh, FCAT viewers, um, a couple weeks ago we had technical problems when we were outdoors, and so there was no FCAT uh, program that week. Last week we didn't, uh, we didn't take because Father Adam, I didn't want to put him on the spot with that as well. So now we're back into the swing of things. And so we're almost into August, so please keep in mind as well that you can talk to uh, um, any of our people, like uh, Mariana for the raffle, and I don't know, um, do we have Linda back there? No, not Linda, but if you want to volunteer, you can talk to me or Linda Pahalski, uh, but we are getting awfully close to that, that barbecue, so if you can help with the barbecue, uh, please start talking to us. Please make sure you get your tickets from Peg Kostuk. Uh, that is going to be here before you know it. So as we do gather on an absolutely gorgeous day, and it's a nice, I think it's like 70 degrees in here, dry, it's just absolutely wonderful. It's a wonderful place to be to celebrate the Eucharist. I ask you at this time to please make a private examination of your conscience. And may we now recite the feet of your together. I confess to Almighty God, one and the Holy Trinity, who knows the innermost secrets of thy heart, thy destiny, in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. In your presence, O God, I publicly express sorrow for the many sins by which I have offended you. I resolve to amend my mind, to improve and sanctify it, endeavoring henceforth to serve your faith. All the days of my life. I ask all those who dwell within the Church of Christ, the Blessed Mother Mary, the Holy Apostles, Martyrs, and Faithful, who have lived, suffered, and died for the Gospel of Jesus Christ, as well as you, my brothers and sisters, to witness my confession and pray for me to our Lord of God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant, most gracious Father, that with purity of heart, we may worthily fulfill this holy action, establish remembrance of the Last Supper and the death of Jesus Christ, and for our sanctification and salvation. Be present among us, Jesus, our most perfect Master, because you said there were two or three are gathered together in my name, you are among them. We also ask, Lord, that through this holy liturgy, we may experience a spiritual revival and a better understanding of your holy will, bringing us together in one great family, guided by your commandments, and by love, truth, and justice. Amen. And may we say together, let us pray to the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, indivisible, revealed in triune power for all time, now, and forever. Glory to God. 
God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. For God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of God, Lord God, let me God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand. destined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. Those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. This is the word of the Lord. I, wisdom, dwell with experience and judicious knowledge attained. Mine are counsel and advice. Mine is strength. I am understanding. Alleluia, alleluia. My mouth shall speak wisdom. My heart shall offer innocence. Cleanse my heart and my lips, Almighty God, as you cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal. In your mercy, cleanse me so I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that is buried in a field which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and he buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down and put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away back into the sea. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all of these things? And they answered, yes. And Jesus replied, that every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Yeah. 
And the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of exceptional value, he goes and sells all that he has and he buys it. And this selection is taken from this morning's gospel according to St. Matthew. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you probably know, since I just mentioned it, Sharon and I were stranded last weekend so that I could perform the wedding of a friend's daughter. I don't know how this happened. He was my teenage altar boy, and now his kid is being married. So I don't know how all that time flies by like that, but it was a very nice experience. So after the wedding, I'm in the sacristy of the cathedral with Brian Bishop Lukowski. And at that point, after I celebrated the Mass, he lets me know that I just celebrated Mass with Bishop Oder's chalice. So I took the Prime Bishop by the shoulder and said, why didn't you let me know that before Mass so I couldn't start thinking about it? And his honest answer to me was, Randy, you couldn't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> so I laughed and I told him he was probably right. If I had known that I was celebrating Mass with Bishop, Ch Bishop Potter's chalice in my hand, the same chalice that Bishop Potter held in his hands when he celebrated Mass, I probably would have been too nervous to concentrate on what I had to do. I would have been lifting up that chalice, my hands would have been shaking so much, the wine would have been sloshing all over, it wouldn't have been pretty. You know, value and worth are not always absolutes. They often depend on our individual responses. Holder means an awful lot to me, but if he didn't, then neither would the fact that I was holding his chalice as opposed to any other chalice, because his chalice really wasn't all that fancy. It was just that it was held by Holder that meant so much. You know, another example. I'm in the doctor's office last week, and I'm in the exam room waiting for him to show up, and so I picked up an old Time magazine from, like, May or June of this year. There's some ridiculous-looking modern art paint in there that recently sold for something like $100 million. So the doctor walks into the exam room. I got the magazine. I'm going to put it away. I showed the doctor. And I said, you know, I'd rather have any one of your young kid's pictures that he has hanging in the room than this thing. I said, what kind of people like this kind of stuff? <laughs> then my doctor tells me that he and his family went out to Boston to see a show of this very artist. <laughs> so, you know, value is definitely not an absolute. And this is the guy who's going to be doing my exam, and I had just consulted him. We had a tag sale here, and you probably know the story if you were working at the tag sale. Someone had donated a painting, and it looked nice enough, we put it with the other paintings, but we didn't look close enough. It was a painting by a local artist, I think her name was Joanne Denny. Now someone recognized who that artist was, paid our price for the painting, and went home with something of a much greater value than what we had charged. And then one last story. A well-known interior decorator in Boston has offered the chance to purchase a marble mantelpiece. It is expensive. It's beyond what she would normally pay, but her eye catches something special about this piece. She pays the hefty price, according to the newspaper article, but then she goes home and does some research and discovers that this mantelpiece was crafted by a famous artist, and now that mantelpiece is in the Museum of Fine Arts, and her name is attached to it for the rest of the time it's going to be there. So that mantelpiece was expensive, and the seller knew that it was special and jacked up the price, and she paid the price, but the buyer, she saw something of even greater unseen value than even the buyer, than the seller saw. And this is not unlike this morning's parable of the merchant that goes out to buy pearls. He's scouring the market when his trained eyes see something of exceptional value in one particular pearl. He was probably planning to purchase several fine pearls so that he could do his business. This was his business plan. Go out and buy several of these pearls, make whatever you do with them, and then sell them, and that's how I would make my living. But when he saw that one exceptional pearl, he cashes out. In today's words, he maxes out his credit card, he goes out onto a financial limb, he takes a chance. He pays a great deal of money for that one exceptional pearl because he sees in it that what no one else can see. And for as expensive as that pearl was, he knew that he was still getting the better part of the deal. He saw in that pearl a greater value than anyone else had noticed. Now Jesus uses this example about seeing things that no one else can see, about appreciating value and worth that other people just walk on by to help explain 
the kingdom of heaven is like you. You know, we all think about heaven, but how much do we invest in heaven right now? You know, you go to a funeral, you all think about heaven, you all want to think that our life continues, but how many of us on a beautiful, sunny summer day, how much time do we really give to the heavenly preparation? It may be important for us to think about the fact that Jesus does not describe heaven itself. Even after Jesus' resurrection, even after Jesus knows what heaven is about, he doesn't come back and tell his followers any details about heaven. To me, this means that what heaven is, is not a concern for us right now. Again, when we were in Scranton last week, we visited the cemetery. There are a lot of plots that we have to go visit. I mean, there's a lot of plots up in Seven Scranton we have to go visit. And while over by the graves of Sharon's mother and father, I always stop by to see two particular monuments. They're absolutely beautiful. One shows two buddies. They're out on a mountain lake, and they're fishing. And one of them's got the net ready, and I don't know anything about fishing, but some fish is coming out of the water, and they're getting ready to bring that into the boat. You know, there's two deer that are right by the water's edge. The, the, fall, the, the mountains are just covered with trees. There's a little bit of smoke coming out of the cabin right by the shore. And you could tell that this person, whoever that was that was buried there, this was his vision of heaven. Another monument shows a man and a woman. They're walking down a beautiful path towards a quiet sunset. And again, you could tell that this family, this was their image of heaven. And would imagine that both of these mean so much to those families. While the hopes may not be far off base, hopefully heaven is a wonderfully peaceful place and also filled with all the people that we love, but the fact is we really have no idea at all what heaven is going to be like. The details are not there for us, at least not yet. Instead, in this morning's parables, Jesus concentrates on the value of personal places on getting into heaven now. We don't know what heaven will be. We trust in Jesus enough that heaven is worth our effort. So what are we going to do now to get into heaven? Does heaven mean enough to any one of us now that we would sacrifice other things of value for it? The way that we lead our lives, our priorities in life. Maybe how much time do we give to God as opposed to something else? We all know there's other things you can do on a Sunday morning. But you chose to give at least this hour to God. Does that mean a lot to you? Is it enough to influence the rest of your week until you come back again? What do we do for God to prepare for heaven? Will we work and be ready and worthy of heaven now? It's not just when we close the casket and then all of a sudden heaven becomes a first, a first thought in our heads. What about now? Do we think about heaven? And the two parables of the, the treasure buried in the field, and especially that pearl of exceptional value, the finder sells all that he has to purchase them. Heaven is not an afterthought. It's a priority. They sell all that they have to get those gifts. In other words, heaven can't only be something that we think about later and later and later in life until there's no more life left. Heaven has to be something we think about now, not only because of death, but because this is our chance to be with God already. Heaven means making life choices. My favorite one of this morning's three Jesus stories is the one about the pearl because the buyer entered into an honest transaction with the seller. It wasn't about finding hidden treasure and then burying it again and then buying a lot without knowing that the treasure was there. It wasn't about hauling in a net full of fish. That one, I just don't get that fish story because the good fish, they're thrown into a bucket. Why? So that you could sell them and eat the good fish. With the bad fish, they're thrown back into the water. I don't want to be the good fish who gets eaten. I want to be the bad fish that gets thrown back into the water. So I don't understand that one. But the parable of the pearl, the buyer saw something of so much more value than anyone else could see. You are those people. You see something about heaven already on a gorgeous day like this that you come to church. You already have that idea that there is something of value and beauty and wisdom here. And so you already see that, and our hope is that we always see better and better. He's like that man out in, or, you know, the, those sellers. They're like that man out in, or the woman out in Boston, who, you know, saw something special in that mantelpiece. And she really went out of her way and gave up more of her money than she wanted to. But now her name is next to that piece in the Museum of Fine Arts. Is Jesus asking us in the story, how much is heaven worth to us? What are we going to do now to get into heaven? How are we going to change our lives to get into heaven? 
What is the comfortable areas that we are in that maybe we have to become less comfortable so that we can be more ready for heaven and less suited to this world? You know, what are we doing for heaven now? You know, I don't know what heaven will be like because Jesus has never said what heaven will be like. But I do believe that it's there. And if you're at all like that, then now is the time for us to prepare more and more for heaven. Not for death, but for heaven. So let us be saintly now in how we lead our lives, which doesn't mean that we have to walk around with a halo, it doesn't mean we have to walk around carrying a Bible, it doesn't mean that we have to walk around and you know, say Jesus this and Jesus that in every conversation. It means living and acting like a Christian, like Jesus would have us act. So when those times come, eventually for all of us, we will then really be ready for heaven, whatever it is, whether it be a mountain lake, whether it be walking hand in hand with the one you love, whatever it may be, we will be ready for heaven. And may that be our prayer on this gorgeous day. In Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And I do just want to say one more thing. When we uh, went to Scranton last Sunday, um, we went to uh, the Dixon City Parish, which is uh, adjacent to a Scranton Navy I don't know, maybe six, ten miles away. And we went there because Mrs. Gannat goes to the Dixon City Parish. And so we sat with Mrs. Gannat. And I don't know if you remember, but years ago, uh, Jason Fair or Jason Faircloud came up here uh, to Mass with Scranton. He used to come up with a girl named Kathy Yannick, and she was there. So uh, the four of us went out to breakfast. And Mrs. Gannat did ask me to tell all of you um, hello from her uh, to Holy Name of Jesus. So I'm passing on Mrs. Gannat's hello to all of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. <clears throat> Almighty Lord, as we gather before your altar at this time, we offer our special prayers for Sarah and Jimmy Pitchin as they relocate to Okinawa, uh, where he now serves with the Marines, as offered by Beth and Bob Paula. We offer our prayers in memory of parents on the anniversary of their deaths, July 20th, 10 years for Father John Mietlinski. July 23rd, 25 years, for Mother Florence Mietlitsky is offered by their daughter, Shirley Mietlitsky Floyd. We offer our prayers in memory of George Miller, who passed away this morning from cancer. Also, prayers for strength and hope for his wife, Sharon, and their family is offered by a friend. We also offer prayers at this time for Richard uh, Slauenweit, um, as he continues to undergo radiation and chemo, is offered by Marianna Foster. We offer prayers for Liz Bridgman, battling cancer, raising three young girls on her own. Alex, a young girl with lymphoma Hodgkin's disease. And Alicia, a young mother of three with stage four breast cancer, is all offered by Cindy Benjamin. We continue to offer our prayers uh, for Meg Connors, and also Frank Sprosky is offered by Ellen and Don Sprosky. We offer our prayers for Richard Poe, is offered by the Poe and Foster family, Foster family, and two-year-old Jack Soleil is offered by Marianna Foster. Are there, I think, yep, are there any other intentions that you would like to offer from the congregation? Yes, ma'am. ICBMs that can throw a nuclear missile over here. Yeah, absolutely. We should pray for uh, world peace. Absolutely. Thank you, Teresa. Anything else? For all of these intentions, Lord, plus the private ones that we bring before you now, and also, Lord, we ask you to bless each and every one of us here gathered, to bless those who are perished or unable to be with us here today, and those who are perished who have chosen not to be with us here today. And for these things together, Lord, we pray by sin. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day and day of prayer, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. 
eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. Amen. They have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the begotten not made of one being of the Father. Through him all things remain for us and for our salvation. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified by the Pontius He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again and he will come to the churches. He ascended into heaven and he is at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And the kingdom will come out of the land. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the cross. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I have not much baptism with forgiveness and sins, and let the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. wisdom, you should ask God, who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be granted.
other words of the Archpriestly Prayer and with holy fervor. Our Savior took bread into his holy, venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his Almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, mindful Lord, we your servants and your faithful people, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son and our Lord, as well as his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we receive from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, and a backward offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. These gifts we receive with a joyful countenance as from him who is the giver of all temporal and eternal good gifts, and with an unshakable faith that they will become for our souls a saving remedy. We humbly ask, O Almighty God, to command that our offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your highest altar and in the presence of your divine majesty. That we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who have passed on to eternity. To these souls, Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, grant everlasting life, and to those who bring life straight in the path of righteousness, unmindful of your fatherly love, mercifully shorten their suffering. We ask this in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts are always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merit and eternal joy. Numbers of your company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, and with him, and in him, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit.
future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, is also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our days, supported by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same, Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching, and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused for my judgment. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last let me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. Grant this who lives reigns of God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Shall I return to the Lord for all the graces that He has given me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon the Lord, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be given.
body and the blood of Christ. The 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 body and the blood of Christ. Body and the blood of Christ. The 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 body. The body and the blood of Christ. The body and the blood of Christ. The body and the blood of Christ. The peace and the blessing of the God, the Father, and the Spirit descend upon you, may be forevermore. The body and the blood of Christ. 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 The body and the blood of Christ.
To those who are called, both Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, grant us true insight that we who have been strengthened by your presence may bring forth treasures both old and new and be worthy to be called your disciple. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Oh, the sacrifice is offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. For your mercy may be effective for myself and all of those for whom I have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Lord be with you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came to be, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found light. Life is the light of men. The light shines on in darkness, a darkness that did not overcome him. There was a man named John sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, and his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's holiness, but by God. And the word became flesh, and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. 